Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Suzanne Cart from ProTrain, and welcome to our free webinar, Certifications for High Demand, High Growth, and High Pay Jobs. Um, before we get started, I have a couple housekeeping items. The first thing is, is this webinar will be taped, and you will be sent uh, a copy of it uh, via email tomorrow. Um, and then the second thing is that if you have any questions for our presenters, feel free to go ahead and type them into the questions box at the right of your screen, and we will be answering questions at the end of the presentation. At this point, I'd like to introduce our presenters. With us today is Kirk Smallwood and Trenton Hightower. I'm serving as VP of Business Development for the U.S. Academic Market at CompTIA. Kirk Smallwood is responsible for a team working with thousands of secondary and post-secondary school partners. CompTIA's acad uh, Academy Partner Program helps to provide classroom and instruct uh, instructor tools, as well as special school pricing on CompTIA certifications to help with student success and to prepare students for IT careers. CompTIA is the largest vendor-neutral IT certification body in the world. Meanwhile, Trenton has spent over 25 years working in leadership at community colleges. He spent six years as a coordinator manager at Finger Lakes Community College, seven years as AVP for continuing education at Frederick Community College, and seven years leading Virginia as the assistant vice chancellor for workforce development for all 23 colleges. At this time, I'm going to hand over the reins to Kirk. Kirk? Thank you so much, Suzanne. Uh, appreciate it, and thanks everyone for joining. Good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are. Um, let's get started. So I'm going to talk a lot about uh, the IT industry, but but in general about certifications um, and how they equate to jobs. But let's get started. So we'll discuss a little bit about CompTIA for those of you who aren't familiar with us. Uh, the opportunity in IT and IT careers. Cybersecurity. You've probably heard of this term recently. There's a lot of stuff going on there. Certifications what CompTIA is doing about it, and what you can do about it um, as, uh, as an organization, and how CompTIA can help you. So let's get started. And, we'll add, and as Suzanne said, we'll have some Q&A at the end as well. So about CompTIA, um, we have been around for about 35 years. We are a not-for-profit IT association, really focus in, in four main key areas. Um, we educate IT channel businesses, so we work um, with a lot of small IT solution providers, so resellers, FARs, whatever you want to call them, but we also have a lot of the, the, the core huge IT companies, Dell, HP, Cisco, Apple, as members too, and we get them together, they communicate with each other in terms of what's affecting their side of the industry, whether it be security or healthcare or um, women in IT, how to, how to advance the industry, and so they, they serve in different communities, they talk to each other, they talk about ways in which they can make a difference in IT, and then we in turn provide a lot of education, especially for the smaller guys on how to run their businesses, research on where the industry is going, how to prepare for uh, become switching from break fix to managed services, et cetera, et cetera. So we just do a lot with them with regards to events and education. And certifying the workforce, as Suzanne mentioned, we are the largest vendor neutral IT certification body in the world, or we're globally recognized. We can think of our certifications as almost an economic passport that can take you anywhere in the world, and chances are our certifications will be recognized as a seal of approval from the industry that you have the knowledge, skills, and abilities to do a particular job in the IT industry. Um, we advocate for technology growth. We, um, Although we're based in Downers Grove, Illinois, we have an office near the Capitol Hill in D.C., uh, in which we are constantly fighting for um, IT industry needs, whether that be growing the workforce or issues around cybersecurity or issues around small IT businesses and things that affect them. We're, we're fighting always for things to impact positively the IT industry. And then finally, we get back through philanthropy. Uh, philanthropy. We have a foundation called Creating IT Futures, and they have some great programs, uh, one being IT Ready, in which they take folks that are in underserved populations, um, minorities, women, uh, returning military veterans, and get them in a six-month um, paid apprenticeship uh, after getting them CompTIA A+, and getting them into IT careers. And so far, 95% of those folks that have gone through the IT Ready program are in permanent uh, IT jobs. So it's been a tremendous, tremendous program. Um, and so that's a little about CompTIA and what we do, and we'll talk more about the certification side. In general, IT is rocking. Um, the global IT industry is well on its way to a $5 trillion um, uh, 
end goal over the next uh, uh, several years. By the end of 2017, we'll be at 3.5 trillion. That's growth of 4.1% in 2017. Why? Well, obviously, technology is everywhere. There's not a single business that doesn't use technology in some, some form or fashion. There's not a single business that doesn't have technology needs. Um, one time somebody said, what about farmers? And I said, nope, I can get you there too. Um, I have a, we have one of our member companies, besides being a small IT solutions provider, is also a farmer. Went to his farm one time and got into his tractor. That thing is looks like a pretty much an F-16 F, uh, uh, cockpit. He's got a joystick in there. He's got all kinds of navigation stuff in there. That tractor can run itself. It knows exactly when to drop seed. It knows exactly which path it has to go on. He could literally just let it go by itself. So technology affects everything. Think about Uber, for example. Uber is just a software platform, but it's transformed the transportation industry in terms of taxis and getting here and there. It's easier to use. Um, it's just more fun to use, frankly. You just use it with your cell phone. So technology has changed everything. Think about Internet of Things. Nowadays, you have light bulbs that are connected. You have um, you have all types of home automation type products. You can unlock your uh, door with your cell phone. Everything's becoming connected, and so that means technology is everywhere. That means more and more people need to work on technology as well, and that means there's a lot of open IT jobs. Currently, if you had to guess, I'm guessing a lot of you wouldn't guess this high, but there are more than 400, uh, 547,000 open IT jobs currently in the U.S. Uh, that's trending up. It's up from 500,000 in the previous quarter, and we track this very carefully with um, with Burning Glass, uh, one of our partners in research, but this is not going to change anytime soon. Again, it, it's not its not like technology is going to slow down. Everything's becoming more technology um, incorporated or technology is becoming more incorporated into technology. So that keeps going up. And it's not just that there's a lot of jobs. These are not just jobs that are paying minimum wage or a little above. These are great paying jobs, whether it be a computer information systems manager, software developer, security analyst, computer support specialist, even entry-level jobs into IT pay very, very good. Um, in fact, the median salaries, if you compare non-IT occupations and IT occupations, IT occupations median salaries are more than double that of non-IT occupations. So that's great, right? Lots of open IT jobs, lots of good money in the jobs, lots of opportunity. Once you get in, you can obviously move up very fast because of the demand of the open IT jobs. We, again, we do a lot of research with our members, uh, with companies that aren't even our members, but we're constantly getting a pulse of what companies are saying, HR managers, et cetera, about what they believe about um, technology adoption and therefore the, um, the preparation or the knowledge that their own staff has when it comes to IT. 73% of executives believe that the security threat is increasing. 85% indicate that IT skills gaps in their business exist. So again, correlate those two. Executives believe the security threat is increasing, yet their staff, they indicate that um, the gap is not uh, is too large. It's, it's, it's not where it needs to be in terms of where their skills of their employees need to be. 92% of businesses are engaged in training of their employees. 72% believe IT certifications will become even more important than they are now. And um, only 28% only believe that their importance will remain unchanged, and I think those people are, um, are probably, not, um, probably not being realistic. In terms of cybersecurity, you hear about this all the time. Um, I'm just going to show um, this site. This is actually a live map that is showing cybersecurity attacks going on right now. You'll see uh, so many of them seem to be coming towards the U.S. Uh, for some reason. Um, we're always a target in everything that we do, but uh, you can see a lot of them heading up to Seattle there, a lot of them going to Silicon Valley. So these are attacks going on right now. Kind of a neat graph, but also pretty scary at the same time. It looks like, if any of you guys, I'm dating myself, remember Missile Command, it kind of reminds me of that video game. Um, but anyway, that just shows you what's going on now in the, uh, in the cyber world. So getting back, to cybersecurity, human error remains the number one threat to IT security breaches. Um, I have a feeling that this will probably remain that way for uh, some time. Um, it's, it's something that we're constantly having to educate businesses on, and 
it's becoming, um, they're becoming more and more aware of the fact that their employees could be the gateway to a serious error taking place in cybersecurity in their business. Oops, I think I need to go here. Um, why? Why are human error, why is human error rising uh, constantly? Well, there's, there's a number of factors. The increased use of social media by staff. The more staff is using, you know, things like Facebook, Twitter, what have you, it's, it's great for social media and publicity, but it also opens up one more avenue for someone to hack into their, um, their information. So again, with, with every use of social media, it's, it's, it's great, it's, it's what's happening right now, but it also opens the door for, for something else. Same with Internet of Things, with, with everything that's connected now, light bulbs, whatever, everything's got an IP address. That opens up some other way for someone to uh, attack your system. The failure of staff for, um, to get up to speed with new threats. Again, we talked about the need that executives see to get their staff trained and ready. Um, they recognize this. It's, it's getting up with new threats. Threat, th threats are always increasing, always changing. Just a general negligence and carelessness towards security, like for example, Trenton, he posts his password for his computer on a post-it note and posts that on his screen. I've told him many times that's just not a good way to do things. Um, so he proceeded to change his password from 1234 to password. So these are the types of things that we want to look out for. Lack of security expertise with websites and applications, failure of IT staff to, to follow security procedures and, and policies. The growing importance of security, basically this is showing that executives view security as growing significantly higher. You can see how um, it's, it's switching from moderately higher to significantly higher. People are recognizing that these are the trends in information security. And so two years from now, it's going to be higher. Today, it's high already. It's going to be increasingly higher. Just in terms of overall, companies that do invest in adequate resources uh, and employ certified staff save, save about 1.5 million annually in cyber crime calls. Many of these businesses are afraid to um, use that expense, but in, in the way I look at it, it's pretty much like insurance. You, you've got to use it. You never know when it might come into play. Uh, you're glad you have it when you use it. So it's the same type of thing. You, you need to spend the resources to invest in your staff it's going to come back to uh, pay back dividends because your staff's going to be more qualified. They're going to handle these threats uh, better than they would. Imagine what the cost is of having a cyber breach at your, at your business. Uh, the cost is um, quite high, as you can see from some of the examples I'll show you later. Other things complicating factors of security, growing organization of hackers. Uh, if anyone's seen the show Mr. Robot, which is a fantastic show, that show is based very much on reality. There are organizations of hackers, and they actually have consultants that are expert in hacking, ethical hacking, um, people that maybe formerly used to be hackers and now they serve on the good side. But it's very accurate what's happening there in that show, um, even to the detail on the screen when they're showing what they're doing on the screen. They're like, that's legit hacking tools. That's exactly how you would do it. Um, but there are organizations out there that are doing this, you know, ransomware, all kinds of stuff. They'll find a bad picture of you on your Facebook, whatever, they'll hold you for ransom, all kinds of stuff that's going on there. Greater tech and connectivity, again, we talked about Internet of Things, everything's being more connected, which is great, makes life simpler in some ways, but in other ways it opens up the door for hackers. Sophistication of security threats, we'll talk more about that in a few minutes. Greater availability of hacking tools. So my nephew came up to visit uh, last year, and he and his friend were sleeping on the couch downstairs, and they got in like late the night before, and then I came down the next morning, and they were up, and they were already um, on the internet doing stuff that obviously they had to had to use Wi-Fi for. And I said, "Wait a second, I don't think I gave you my Wi-Fi password." And he goes, "Nope." And I said, "So how are you on Wi-Fi?" And he goes, "We're using your neighbors." And I said, "How did you get on my neighbor's Wi-Fi?" And he goes, "You don't want to know." And I said, you're right, you know what, I don't want to know. But if a teenager has access to hacking tools that can get somebody on someone else's Wi-Fi password, then um, you can imagine what the, the real pros have. And by the way, he said my, my network was safe, so I was happy about that. But just the volume of security threats, there are more and more every day, more reliance on the Internet, continued use of old legacy systems that are not up to date and just the consumerization of IT. I mean, the, the, I, the iPhone I have in my hand is more powerful than, I think you've heard this before, than, um, than the computers that got, you know, the first ship on the moon. So it's, it's crazy how much 
stuff trickles down to the consumer now. We have more powerful stuff now than we had in our hands than we had in probably NASA's hands about 20 some years ago. How attacks have changed through the decades? Well, we talked about how attacks have evolved. They become more, more complicated. First in the 90s, they started with simple viruses where a virus wouldn't start enacting on something until you opened it. Worms, on the other hand, would automatically go and find stuff themselves. They didn't need you to pass it on like a virus. A virus, you have to pass on through an email by saying it to somebody else. A worm, just once you open it, will start doing stuff on its own. Then, we, then you move to botnets, which is basically like these zombie computers. People take over a group of computers and are able to use them to do their evil bidding. And then now what we have are something called advanced persistent threats, or APTs. Um, the best example of this was uh, target, the target breach, which we'll talk in just a second. But characteristics of this are that they never stop. They're very highly coordinated. They lurk undetected within the system. You have to truly look for them in order to find them, and it requires special skills and tools. This was really founded on the target attack. This was really the seminal event when it comes to advanced persistent threats. This opened our eyes that there is um, truly a wake-up call needed for the IT security world, and that traditional tools like just firewalls and antivirus are not going to protect from advanced persistent threats. And you see every day an example of some other some other threat. I mean, I, I saw you know some malware that's now affecting you know 36 million. Android users, shoot, I get, I feel like I get a letter almost every other month from someplace that got attacked, whether it be Target or I was under the Anthem attack, or the other day I got a letter from the Rosen Hotel in Orlando that said, hey, thanks for staying with us uh, last week. Uh, by the way, our information was hacked, uh, so you may want to double check your um, credit card and make sure nothing happened there. So, I mean, it just seems like it happens almost weekly at this point. It's it's almost rare when you don't see something, some kind of notice from a company that you've done business with that they've been hacked. The lessons learned are that there has to be more of a focus on the organization's interior network. You have to look at network behavior and truly analyze anomalies that are happening in there. And it requires, again, additional security analyst skills like vulnerability management, threat management, cyber incident response, and security and architecture tool sets. Again, you cannot rely simply on virus software or things like that to, um, to you know, to, to be able to stamp out these threats. It's not going to work on these things. Because of that, the security analyst job role is now the fastest growing job role in the U.S. I'm not talking IT jobs. I'm talking all IT jobs. It is the fastest job role growing in the U.S. currently. The Bureau of uh, Labor and Statistics has said they have never seen a job take off this quickly. I think even in the first few months of 2017, it's already up something like 8%. It's just insane. And this is because everyone's waking up and understanding the need for this job role based on what I described before. That's just an example of you know another way the IT industry is growing and the demand for jobs that we need. As you can see, it pretty much doubled from 2014 to 2015. Let's talk about certification some. What is a professional certification? Well, and simply put, it's a designation earned by a person to ensure qualification to perform a job or a task. Basically, it's a stamp of approval. Now, what IT certifications offer specifically are uh, three main things. One is, is a competitive edge in a cutthroat job market. What we're finding is out there, if two people are applying for the job, one person has the certification, the other person doesn't, that person is going to be getting the job that has the certification because um, we'll talk a little bit more about that, but why that is, but that's in essence what's happening out there. It also provides heightened career advancement opportunities. So once you're in the job, many employees nowadays will say, hey, if you're also going to get the certification, we'll advance your pay and or title. So it provides a, a heightened incentive within the job itself. And the increased value to employers and their organizations. We find that many of our members have all their staff, you know, if they're a small solution provider, they have all their staff certified with uh, certifications. And that gives them a, a stronger message when they're going out to try to get a job, uh, to secure a contract with another company to say, hey, all of our staff is CompTIA A plus and Network Plus certified, for example, among other certifications. So that gives them a increased value to organizations that they're trying to get business with. Close to 70% of IT job postings currently list certification as a requirement. Um, for that reason, um, and we'll talk about this a little bit later, uh, we, we strongly encourage our academic partners to not only, you know, have their degree as an end game when someone's going through their program, 
but to include the certifications as well. And again, we'll talk about that later. But as an example, um, TSA, the transportation security folks, um, one of our partners, our training partners, told us that recently the TSA hired 12 of his students that had CompTIA Security Plus sight unseen. Didn't even need to have an interview, um, just basically need to see their resume to see that they had Security Plus and they were hired on the spot. This is, in a way, how um, it shows two things. One, how much weight certifications now, now carry, and number two, how, um, frankly, desperate many companies are to find qualified people. So it's the certification is becoming, again, more and more important. Some of the other benefits of certified staff we found almost as a byproduct of getting the certification are that people are better, people certified are better able to understand new technologies. They're more productive overall. They have better problem solving skills, better project management skills, and better communication skills. We especially hear all the time, again, we're a membership organization, so we get constant feedback from our members of, as far as what they're seeing in the workforce these days. And if there's two things we hear constantly, it is one, I'm having a really hard time finding people who have um, good soft skills and communication skills. They might have the technical knowledge, but they don't always have the soft skills. And that's one reason why we incorporate more and more soft skills into our certifications like A+. And two, just problem solving skills. There is just not enough insightful problem solving going on with um, new, new people in the workforce these days. And you know, a, a great byproduct of uh, earning certification are these people seem to have more of these types of traits, which is great. Why are certifications so important? Well, I can especially speak for CompTIA in that our certs are truly created by the industry for the industry. It's not like we're out there creating certs in a vacuum. We first analyze, is there a need? Is there a job role that if we create a cert for it, it's going to fill this? Are there a lot of these jobs out there? And specifically working with the industry, what are those jobs all about? In other words, what are the types of things that that person will need to do in the job? What types of skills, knowledge? What will they need to have in order to do this job well? We bring in subject matter experts from around the industry. Again, we're not the experts. We're experts in creating the certification. We're not necessarily experts in all things related to that particular job role. So what are the questions that we need to put on the exam? They actually will lock them in a room for like a week. They come to our headquarters at any given time. Come by our headquarters if you're in Downers Grove, Illinois. You'll probably see a group of 10 to 20 subject matter experts at our, at our headquarters, and they're busy writing um, the exams for us. We're working with them to do these exams to make sure that these questions cover what they need to know for the job. Again, these are job-ready certifications. We also perform ongoing maintenance. Technology changes constantly. Um, because we're ANSI ISO accredited, we have to um, change our certifications every three years to make sure that they are up to speed. So every three years, we launch a new revision to our certification. But that's why I say our certifications are truly crafted by the industry for the industry, because we're, we're creating them using the industry hand in hand, even bringing competitors together in the same room to help us create this, because they understand you know, we're really known as that foundational piece for IT careers, most IT careers. And if a rising tide will raise all ships, these, these companies want to get somebody who has the certification to know that, OK, I don't have to cover this stuff with them. I know they're already CompTIA certified. I know they have this baseline of knowledge. And so that's a real um, um, comforting feeling for them to, to look at somebody who's already certified to bring them into their, um, to their company. So certifications versus degrees, what should I do? Many of you are probably with community colleges or, or four-year colleges. We constantly say, really, it's, it's both. You, you, if, if you're um, truly preparing someone in an IT career for a job, you want to incorporate the certifications with your degree. Chances are, if you're teaching towards, um, if you've got an IT program, you're probably covering a lot of that that's in the objectives of the certification anyway. For example, we work with a lot of schools and we'll come help map uh, their course objectives with the certifications objectives and we'll say, listen, if you just add this in, you're probably going to be 100% mapping right towards the certification. So at the end of the class, have your student go ahead and take the certification, let them, let them get it, and then let them have your degree as well. You're just doubly preparing them for a job role. You're just I mean, you're, what you're looking to do is prepare students for student success. Student success is getting that job. So if that's what you're doing, if that's truly what you're all about, get them both. Get them the degree and the certification. We can work with you on mapping our search in particular, and there's lots of other good organizations that do certs. I don't want to make it sound like the end-all, be-all, but we're a really key part of the IT certification world. Why CompTIA? Well, 
again, we are um, recognized globally. We have certifications ranging from foundational, oops, ranging from foundational to mastery level. But most most people know us truly for our professional level certifications that provide that that foundation that you would stack on top of ours. The vertically specific ones, a vendor specific something. So on top of ours, you'd stack a Microsoft, a Cisco, an Oracle, what have you. But people that get our certifications first tend to do better on the vendor specific stuff as you get more specific into where your job path is going. Um, we are, um, we are um, mandated by the Department of Defense. We have four certs currently and I think close to being five that are mandated within the Department of Defense uh, 8570 mandate meaning depending on what level you are in the Department of Defense, you may need to have between one to four or five of our certifications. We're not the only ones on that, but we're one of the primary certification bodies on there. Uh, five certifications that will launch your IT career, you will routinely see us on lists like this. You have A plus and Network Plus on there, for example, in terms of the top five. Uh, again, we're, we're globally recognized there. And we did a study recently with the state of Illinois. We, we really want to do a deep dive into, okay, we're, we're saying our certifications are important, but how can we truly, truly validate that? How can we have some empirical um, evidence and data that's gonna show that? So we did a study with the state of Illinois. We worked with their Department of Education and, um, and the Department of Labor. And we took around, I believe it was about four or 5,000 IT workers that were currently in jobs and we found those that had CompTIA certifications and those that didn't. What we found was the difference was significantly higher in terms of their pay. So again, these people are in similar jobs, but their pay is different. What we found was that the CompTIA certified people had about a third higher pay just one quarter after taking the exam than the non-CompTIA certified person. By the third quarter, it was about one and a half times. So again, about third, three quarters past the time they got the job compared to the non-cert holder, they were making about one and a half times what the non-cert holder was. So we were very relieved, frankly, to see this. We, we were pretty sure that our certifications held a lot of uh, merit in the industry, but it showed that we were right in this. And so that's a study that we did with the state of Illinois, and we've been doing this with some other states as well. So that shows a little bit about, about the value. What are we doing specifically about cybersecurity? Again, I mentioned how we're mandated by the Department of Defense. In fact, a couple of our uh, security, um, uh, uh, security certifications, the Department of Defense came to us and said, listen, we need a certification in this space here. There's nothing, there's something here and here, but there's nothing right here in the middle here. And so we created our CSA plus exam as well as our CASP exam on, on their behest and we said, hey, you're our biggest customer. If you're gonna be buying these, we'll absolutely produce it because chances are if you need it, then there's a lot of other folks that need it as well. So that's how, you know, just again, how we're viewed in the industry. I mentioned about the security analyst job role, again, the fastest growing role in the US. As a result of that, again, we created a, a new cert we launched in March called CSA Plus, and this is developed to address the need for IT security analysts. Remember, there's, there's a big, knowledge gap in terms of really being able to go into um, um, a security system uh, um, and analyzing the anomalies that are taking place in there. It's, it's much more complex at this point. So again, configure and use threat protection tools, perform data analysis, interpret the results to identify vulnerabilities. That's what cybersecurity analyst is all about and it fits neatly between our security plus and our CASP, our Advanced Security Practitioner Cert as well. So that's recently launched in March. It's gotten very, very good feedback so far. And this, with the, with the launch of CSA Plus, this really rounds out our cybersecurity pathway. We truly have, from novice to expert, a path that you can insert yourself in, in any, you know, wherever, wherever it fits. In other words, if you don't have any um, expertise in it or any knowledge of this, you've started IT Fundamentals and work your way up there. Or you may already have A plus uh, fundamentals in terms of software and hardware security and troubleshooting. You may already have that, so you can insert yourself in after A plus. It just depends on where you're at in terms of your job role, your experience, and your education. But now we have truly a cybersecurity career pathway um, for students to follow. In the future, just giving you kind of a peek into what we're looking at. In the future, you'll see, although we've increased this quite a bit we've increased the number of performance-based testing questions on our certifications. In other words, we're moving away from simple A, B, C, D, multiple choice questions to truly having an interactive um, HTML-driven experience where you're 
you may have to configure a network, you know, point to the different products on this screen and the order of which you would configure this network or move these pieces around in the right order. So it's more than just showing, you know, A, B, C, U, D kind of guessing. Performance-based testing truly shows more of examples that you truly know the information and that you're able to perform on the job better. So more and more tests questions over time are going to have performance-based testing. We're going to be moving, you know, 100% in the future to, to this, but it's going to take some time. Remote proctoring, we want to make it as easy as possible for people to take our exams. And so we will probably in the next couple of years have remote proctoring for all of our exams. The ability for someone, if they have uh, a secure laptop and environment, um, there is technology out there nowadays where remotely someone can show, based on their video camera on their laptop or desktop, that the environment is secure. It can detect if you're cheating, if your eyes are moving around, if you're looking at notes, if you're typing on something. We have software out there that can do that. It's just a matter of uh, incorporating that within our platform. Uh, content, you're going to see us getting more into content. Traditionally, we have been just a certification body. In other words, creating the certification, and there are lots of other content producers out there that do books and test prep and labs and things like that. You're going to see us very shortly uh, in the coming months get into uh, our own CompTIA, you know, best of breed content. So be on the lookout for that. Um, also, um, I want to show another tool that we have. We recently got a grant from Burning Glass, from NICE. I'm sorry, the National Initiative for Cybersecurity Education, um, and working with Burning Glass as well. We wanted to create something that was truly a visual aid to show the number of cyber jobs out there uh, in the U.S. And so what we did was we created cyberseek.org. And I'm going to see if I can show you this. So this is cyberseek. We launched this in November, and it's a, it's a really great tool. It provides a number of different things. For one thing, there's an interactive map. And so with this interactive map, you can go by, by nation, by region, by, by state, and you can nail down. I'm in Virginia, so currently there are 36,000 cybersecurity job openings, and there's about 85,000 um, total employed uh, cybersecurity workforce. The ratio of worker qualified workers to the job force is very low. It's about 2.4. You want that to be closer to five. The, the, the average for all jobs in the U.S. is about five, a ratio of five. So as you can see, and you'll, you'll see this in every state, it's low. Texas, 2.7. California, 1.9. Extremely low. But you can go by region and see, re, again, region, state, or, or nationwide, uh, you can hone in and see what the job market looks like these days in terms of qualified workers and open jobs. Then there's also cool stuff like career pathways. So you could go on, let's say there's a cybersecurity specialist technician pathway. You can see the number of job openings there. You can see the average salary. You can see the next step into cybersecurity analyst. Again, number of jobs and average salary. So this is something really good that you can show students or teachers, anyone to kind of relay the opportunity there in IT pathways. Um, so let me get back to my presentation here. Oops. Um, so um, who can use CyberSeq? It's really for a number of different audiences. So educators and career counselors can help show students pathways in career uh, in careers in cybersecurity. They can show them that map, show them where the open jobs are. Employers can find out how they can hire the cybersecurity workers that I need. Students can really understand, you know, how can they prepare for a career in cybersecurity? What are, the what are the certifications people are looking for? What are the different pathways? Same thing with job seekers and current workers and policymakers as well. How can I build up the cybersecurity workforce in my community? So, so it's cyberseek.org is the site. Uh, please check it out. It's a really great tool. We'll actually be refreshing the data here very soon, uh, working with Burning Glass. What can you do as an organization? I'm going to make the assumption that most of you are academic institutions. So I'll kind of be speaking to that, but not solely. I mean, there are things that anybody can do. Um, identify, if you're someone who's training people towards jobs, identify them, and this could be for any industry, but identify the most in-demand job. You should be out there understanding from employers out there, what are they looking for? What are, what are they lacking in terms of jobs? What are the jobs they need to fill? And you could be a trusted pipeline to those people. Once you identify those jobs, identify the, the top industry and globally recognized certs. There, frankly, is a lot of junk out there in terms of certifications. It can get confusing. That's one reason I'm excited. I'm serving on a 
industry credentialing engine uh, board. Uh, we are looking to create a website that really helps separate the good from the bad, the stuff that's truly industry recognized and truly holds job weight in the industry from those that do not. So we're in the process of doing that. But if you need help, we can also help you as well. There's, there's lots of good certs out there besides just CompTIA's, but uh, it does take a little bit of time to work through those. But understand you know, what those are. And then once you have those, map your classes or your courses towards them. Again, if you're, um, if you're a community college or a college, have the CERP be part of the outcome. Um, map your classes towards there so that your um, students are coming out with a degree and the certification. They're going to be much more job ready than if they just had one or the other. And then please, um, I beg you, get your instructor certified. We find many times in, in schools that the ones that are not succeeding we find out, well, did your instructor get certified in the certification before they taught it? Well, no, um, but they have a lot of experience. It's like, yeah, but you need to get certified, and we can help you with that. We provide free instructor certification vouchers so that your instructors can get certified as well. So your instructors have to get certified. It's not a mandate, but I'm telling you, if you want student success, your instructors need to be certified. It helps them prepare better. Make sure it's a mandated part of the outcome. I'm not saying you necessarily have to make passing the cert a requirement to get the degree, but I would say mandate that they take it. Um, what have they got to lose? They might even pass it. The chances are pretty good that they pass it if, if you did some of the before mentioned steps to make sure you map your classes towards the certification. But give them the experience of taking the exam. If they pass it, imagine how much confidence they're going to have. Plus, it's just going to get them that much more prepared for the job. But you know whether you decide to make it, make passing a, a mandated part of getting the degree, that's up to you. But I would make taking the exam a mandated part of the class. And then work-based learning, um, we we are a huge believer in work-based learning on the IT in the IT industry, especially. Um, it provides amazing opportunity to improve the soft skills to really apply what they've learned to that. It's really important um, as I would say part of your curriculum. Any chance you get to visit a, um, a business uh, as a part of the class, uh, you know, get some time as an apprenticeship or what have you, anything you can do to, to make that happen, it's truly, truly valuable. We've, we've, I see firsthand in the DC, Washington, D.C. area, I serve on the D.C. Um, National Academy Foundation, and a big part of what we do is get people into, um, get businesses to get people into apprenticeships. And the students, after you talk to them, it just makes a world of difference. For some, it actually, they realize, you know what, this actually isn't the field I wanted to go into, and that's just as valuable as the experience itself. So um, work-based learning opportunities are tremendous. And then help students understand the importance of certification. If you're, if you're having them take the certification, help them understand why it's important, that it's what the industry is looking for. If you need more information on that, happy to share that. We have all kinds of information on the value of certifications we can provide to you. Um, but it's truly important that they understand why it's so important. And then become, again, as I said before, you can become a trusted workforce pipeline to businesses. They'll rely on you. Hey, you got some more people getting certified and, and, and getting degrees? Send them my way. We'll take them. You guys have done a great job in filling our pipeline. Um, and we can help as well. Uh, so CompTIA, we have an academy partner program where we partner with schools, um, high schools, community colleges, four-year colleges. It's free to join, and we provide a lot of great benefits, resources for your instructors, um, this kind of certification exams, white papers, value of certification documents, all kinds of stuff you can share in your classroom with your students. And then um, we can truly help in student success. That's really what it's all about. Um, again, the discount certifications for students, complimentary instructor vouchers, and CERT Master licenses. CERT Master is our um, adaptive online tool that helps you uh, master the information to take the certification and give you more confidence. Research, as I mentioned before, a lot of the stuff I was sharing today is based from our research team. And then classroom resources like posters and things like that. And then test results. If you need test results from your students, if they haven't provided them to you, we can get them for you. If you have the voucher number, uh, it's not a problem for us to get those to you. Um, so uh, we also have the CompTIA Instructor Network. This is a LinkedIn group that has more than 1,700 instructors on there. Instructors of all types, whether they be from New Horizons or Global Knowledge or community colleges, these folks share best practices as far as what's, what's helped them in the classroom. And then we also provide free training and tools. We provide regular webinars where we really hone into the different objectives of the certifications each week. Uh, for example, for Network Plus, we'll hone in on objective, you know, the first objective one week, the next week is another webinar on the next objective and so on and so forth. It takes a really deep dive to make sure the instructors are well prepared to teach the, um, the course. 
And then I'd be remiss if I didn't invite you guys to our partner summit, which is August 2nd through 4th in um, Austin, Texas. We'll have some great training there. We'll have amazing opportunity to network with other instructors. Again, learn best practices in the classroom. And um, it's really all about, for us, student success. That's what we strive for. And that means getting the student prepared for the job. And that's really what we try to uh, trying to do working with our partners. Um, I am now going to turn it over to Trenton from ProTrain um, and he will take it from here. Thank you. Thank you very much Kirk. Um, it was uh, fantastic to uh, be able to work with uh, CompTIA at a number of events. Uh, we do know that um, in the IT area uh, being the leader that you are in the certification credential area it makes a difference. One of the things that we provided a presentation on in the past, if you're interested, uh, give us another note and we'll follow up. We did the um, organizational kind of community assessment and how to uh, collect this kind of data from your community. And we did that in another presentation where we were able to talk about how you provide a community assessment. And that's what Kirk Smallwood was talking about when he said, get out with business and industry, collect the right information, know what the um, high demand, high growth jobs are in your area. And specifically, the Department of Labor is looking at high demand, high growth, and uh, also considering um, high pay. And so uh, Kirk gives a great example of that. Uh, we list for you here in front of you uh, some of the courses that recently in, on the community, one of our partner sites, uh, they've identified some of the uh, high demand, high growth jobs in their area. And you'll see below here that um, we basically started a program where we were working with a community college and a um, local juvenile detention center. And we were creating, um, in 2014, certifications and credentials that would meet demand and growth in the community and for those individuals that were being released. I'm going to share numbers and statistics at the end about some of the uh, success that we've had with each one of these areas in the curriculum below. And I'm also going to talk about what we've added um, in unique certifications and credentials outside the scope of that of IT uh, to include hospitality, healthcare, and um, even some trades programs that meet the demands and growth of the community. We basically did that community assessment uh, process that we've talked about in past uh, presentations for this group, and we were able to collect the hot uh, certifications and credentials to meet that. Through this process, uh, ProTrain was able to work with uh, a college partner to secure the site and also a contract. We were able to help schedule the programs, uh, hire instructors, and bring in all of the good content materials and national certifications. Uh, provide staff assistance and good record keeping so that we can keep good data on, on completers and certifications. Uh, so on the next slide, you'll see that we have an opportunity to talk about um, the, the idea of this juvenile detention center. There were two locations that we were working on. One of the first courses that we identified was Culinary Institute Cook course. So in this case, we um, actually modified a certification and credential with industry skills that match what we could do for our client. Keep in mind that people that are leaving in um, high school, uh, that have a high school degree, may not have a certification or credential for a job or a skill set. The individuals that finish their GEDs are in the same position. Uh, what we organized for the CertSafe certification was that you received the CertSafe Manager Certificate and an 80-hour uh, course through the National Restaurant Association. In doing this, we were able to get the clients and the students through a place of understanding the fry station, the cook station, uh, the dessert station, the salad station. We, we were able to train them to teach and talk the language they needed to when they interviewed for the skill sets that they gained. This put them in a better position to move forward. The next course that we actually built and developed uh, based on our community assessment, which was un unique and different, looks like this. Our next slide will be. 
um, the certified medical bone and coating specialist. Um, through uh, AMCA or NHA, um, we were able to use our current medical bone and coating program instructions to help meet the needs of some medical areas. We've also worked with clinical medical assistants for botanists and um, EKG. We're trying to make sure we meet the national certification as well. The next slide will show you another course. And um, what this does is actually talks about the demand. And we saw that from CompTIA, how they're thinking about what the demand is and meeting the demand and the growth. We know in the medical building and coding area, there are national trends that we're trying to meet and jobs that are available and high demand, high growth jobs. And we're making sure we're um, matching that as well as the local needs. The next slide. Shows dog trainer certification and vet assistant certification. So here we have two new competencies. One of them uh, actually works with uh, training dogs to um, at a high level of capacity associated to dog trainer. And this course is a certification and credential uh, recognized in Virginia, as well as the vet assistant program. We have an internal certification process to ready somebody to go to the workplace and a competency test for that. The next certification is on the slot next slide, and that is the National Retail uh, Certification. That's through the National Retail Foundation, and uh, there is a sales and a marketing uh, certification program, and uh, that has great content and is in still high demand, um, and uh, lots of turnover in the retail industry, especially in the level of uh, high, uh, basic um, uh, hires and the manager positions are a lot more solid so we need to get them certified credentialed and recognized and um, the certification is actually created by the largest retailers in the world so that's one of the reasons why we use the National Retail Certification Foundation. The next slide shows you manufacturing kinds of skills so there is an MS1 uh, certification MT1 certification that we run um, at the juvenile detention center very successfully for our clients um, we've also been able to work with um, Polk State and um, the CPT certification course and ProTrain holds that course to be able to offer that at different sites and run that for different people manufacturing is an up-and-coming um, industry certification necessary and we found that to be in high demand, high growth. Next slide shows you Microsoft. We're getting into the IT skills. I don't need to repeat much here in regards to the CompTIA Academy, which we're one as ProTrain, and um, we're proud to be working with CompTIA. And we have a great relationship with Microsoft on some of their certifications, but you heard all the good ideas about IT. I won't go into that anymore. Next slide, please. is the National Association of Landscaping Professionals. Uh, this is basically an 80-hour course that we put together to help with landscaping certification and attach the turf manager um, um, outlines and information from the National Association of Landscape Professionals. So we're um, organizing another certification of high demand uh, in our community. The next certification or next program actually outlines the, the 12 classes that we have run for them started uh, with over 177 students and um, 82 have completed. Um, that shows you just uh, the success numbers statistically from the classes that we're working with and we're very proud of our high statistics uh, and, our, and our pass rates for the certifications for the courses we're leading. The last slide I'll talk about here is talks about GradCast and us having um, a capability to have a smartphone tracking uh, for some of the people as far as uh, their placement. Uh, we do uh, offer for any of ProTrain graduates a gift from GradCast. It's the largest uh, employer database uh, that has been volunteered of 650,000 employers and especially strong in trades healthcare, IT, and you can actually send a resume out at the click of a button once you pass your exam. We think this is a valuable way to tie um, getting closer to a job than just leaving a student who just passed their certification. Um, we want to be able to know where they're getting employed and being able to track that. We think that's important and I know that you think it is, is as well. Next slide, please. 
Uh, basically, um, we want to thank you for joining us. Uh, ProTrain is proud to be offering this series of programs. We're um, just proud to be able to uh, have great topics and interest that uh, has drawn um, some record crowds for this particular topic. Kirk Smallwood, we thank you very much for your time. Um, it's been a pleasure to hear the presentation and work with you in this. I'd like to turn it back over to Suzanne for any questions. Sorry about that, wait. I was having a hard time unmuting myself. So we do have some questions in here. Um, the first one is uh, Kirk, this is for Kirk, is there a certification pathway that requires a college degree or something similar? Uh, typically not. Um, in, in the IT realm, <laughs> there's usually not, no. Um, the certifications, you know, frankly, could be earned on their own without um, without going to college. Um, I always think it's better to combine them to have a college pathway certification, but um, I understand, you know, that's really not Okay, you're breaking up a little bit, Kirk. Um, um, yeah, I, I don't know if there's someone on Trenton's side. You? Yeah. Um, so the next question is also for Kirk, and if uh, it says, I'm someone interested in seeking IT certification and switching jobs from communications to IT. Do you have to be good at math? That's my weakness. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Um, you don't have to be. Um, but there's, you know, there's some kind of aptitude type things you can have. I believe we have something on our website that you can go through and see what your aptitude is like, if it, if it would be, um, you know, what would be a good path for you, um, what are some of the skills you might need. Um, but no, not necessarily. Um, not necessarily. Um, don't, don't let that get you down. I mean, you can probably get by with a, a certain level of it and not have to be a pro in it. But no, um, you know, I, I would say more than, more than math, it's, you know, are, are, you, are you good at problem solving? Can you can you figure out those things? Um, that's what so much of IT is about. It's you know, what's the challenge? How can we overcome that? How can we, um, how can we work together as a team to to overcome those challenges? I would say, I would say problem solving is probably the skill that uh, could be most helpful there. And the next question is, may we receive a copy of the PowerPoint? And I will include that um, in a follow-up email to everybody. Um, another question for Kirk, how often is cyberseek.org updated? I believe we're trying to update it like every six months or so, um, uh, again, through Burning Glass. Um, I don't expect, in talking to our research team, I asked them that very same question, and, uh, and I said, um, or Tim, who heads up our research team, and um, he said, "I don't expect there to be much change in the in the ratios there. Um, it's not as if all of a sudden uh, tons and tons of IT jobs were filled. There, they keep growing every day. It seems like in terms of the number of jobs. But um, it's it, you know what you see now will probably not change very much when they refresh it. I think it should be sometime in the next uh, in the next month. I believe what they what they're looking at. They launched this in in November. Um, I think they were looking to you know refresh it every six months or so." Okay, great. Um, I don't have any more questions. Um, I would like to give people just a few more seconds, if you do have a question, to type it in to the questions box. In the meantime, as you can see on your screen, is the contact information for Kirk and for Trenton. If you have any questions um, after the webinar is over and you want to get a hold of them, I'd also like to remind you that you will be receiving a copy of this webinar tomorrow um, in your email, so take a look at that. Um, but at this point, I don't see any more questions, so I really would like to thank our speakers today, Kirk Smallwood, Vice President Business Development at CompTIA, and of course our own Trenton Hightower, Vice President Strategic Partnerships and Business Development at ProTrain. And for everybody who attended this webinar, thank you so much um, for um, uh, supporting ProTrain and supporting the work that we do. If you're interested in finding out about partnership uh, for your school, you can contact Trenton at the information on your screen. Uh, I had a couple more questions pop in. The first one is, can ProTrain offer marketing materials support? Yes. If you are a ProTrain partner and you are offering uh, IT test prep 
type of stuff, um, you can go ahead and give me a, a shout out, give me an email um, at skart at protrainedu.org. I'm ProTrain's Director of Marketing and I can help you with some collateral materials. Um, the next question is, is ProTrain partnering with CompTIA so that they may offer programs through not for credit? And I'm going to let um, Trenton answer that question. Trenton? Uh, we, uh, we do offer a CompTIA uh, preparation course in readying you to sit for the exam. And uh, we are a um, CompTIA Academy. Great. Great news. Okay, so thank you everybody for attending today. Look for um, an email tomorrow with a copy of this webinar in it and again the contact information if you have any more questions about CompTIA certifications or about partnering with ProTrain, the contact information is on your screen.